Today, we'll go through some of the most requested games that I haven't covered in my first gaming and thermal test. And yes, I finally got the Poco F4 GT to overheat. Let's get started. Selamat pagi! Good morning everyone, Kenneth here, and today I've got another one and a half hour of gaming footage to share with you. And this is part two of my Poco F4 GT gaming test, so if you haven't watched the first one, I tested Genshin Impact, Mobile Legends and more, I will put the link down below for you to check out after this video. As always, you can find my full disclosure in the description, which basically says I'm always giving you my own honest take on all of my videos. And please help me support the channel by using the affiliate links in the description. You can just click through it before buying anything. I will get a small commission at no extra cost to you. And yeah, thank you very much for that. And let's get straight talking about the test now. So first things first, taking a look at the basic settings of the phone, we are still at the same MIUI 13.0.2 as before. Only this time I turned on performance mode in the battery settings. And yeah, today we're gonna play League of Legends Wild Rift, PUBG New State and Call of Duty Mobile. And stay tuned for the last two games because we're going to check out both the Battle Royale mode as well as the Team Deathmatch mode. As for the stuff you'll see on screen, I've got MIUI's power monitor overlay and also screen refresh rate turned on. And then we started the play session with 100% battery and this is plugged in. So yeah, let's unplug it right now and fire up Wild Rift as our first test. Same as before, we're going to put the screen brightness at about 75% with auto brightness turned off. And let's take a quick look at the settings here. Now, it is very unfortunate that the frame rate options above 60 FPS are locked. And I even tried modifying the settings file to no avail. But as I scroll here, you can see that I've maxed out all the graphics related settings. So this will do for now, but make sure to subscribe to see the 120 FPS mode tested later. Um, okay, so let's start a game now. And it's my first time playing League of Legends of any kind. So please cut me some slack if I don't have such spectacular fights to show you. But yeah, the game loads in at about nine seconds. The phone is currently at 38 degrees top, 35 degrees bottom, pretty much cool to the touch and the room temperature was the same as my previous testing, which is 29 degrees Celsius. No air conditioner, just the fan turned on to keep me from sweating. So the game starts with a solid 60 FPS, which is a good start, but that's to be expected. And we cannot say for sure until we have more people fighting like this one, this one, and this one. As you can see throughout the game, frame rate is always a rock solid 60 FPS. No matter if I'm chasing someone through the jungle or fighting near the home tower with all the creeps gathering, there's never been a single hiccup. And at the end of this 20 minutes match, we are sitting at about 42 degrees top and 39 degrees bottom. Basically, there is still headroom to play at 120 FPS here. And if my experience with Mobile Legends tell me anything, then it's gonna be slightly hotter at 45 degrees. Again, link to the first gaming test will be down in the description below. But seriously speaking, I just hope it won't overheat because the graphics are better in Wild Rift in my opinion. So that's a quick one for Wild Rift, but let's move on to the next one, which is PUBG New State. And thank you for those who mentioned it in the comment section, because this is a much more demanding game, which is interesting to test out on the Poco F4 GT, because it was chilling while playing PUBG Mobile in my previous test. So at the 21 minutes mark, we are still at the 100% battery somehow. And yeah, taking a look at the graphics section, we're going to change the combat settings into max frame rate and ultra graphics quality. Also, everything else is turned on here, most notably the anti-aliasing. So let's start the first test with the battle royale mode, and I'm going to test out the new map Troy here. I've got the shoulder button set up here, and as for the temperature, we are already running at a warm 44 degrees top and 40 degrees bottom but probably that's due to the lobby setting that I've set to 90 FPS 
or it's just a game that is quite demanding. But starting from the jumping sequence, taking a look around the map from the plane is not a problem at all since it's running at a solid 59 to 60 FPS. Then as we get closer to the ground, we can see the detailed texture, the shadows and everything loads in gradually without dropping the FPS much. Only for a second there, we got 55 FPS, but that's hardly worth mentioning. Anyway, skipping on to our first couple of fights here, I just want to say once again, the shoulder buttons are amazing. There's no latency to it. It just makes my reaction much faster compared to hitting the virtual buttons on screen, which I miss a lot. And yeah, so far we can see the frame rate are still at 60 FPS strong. The screen refresh rate is still at 120 FPS, perhaps for the faster touch response rate, but pay attention to that number on the 29 minutes, 38 seconds mark on the timer. Now that suddenly dropped down to 60, which could only mean one thing, the phone overheated. Or to be more accurate, it's close to overheating. So in order to prevent that, it throttles down the screen refresh rate to 60 to prevent the phone from heating much further. I tried to take another temperature measurement and we are at around 47 degrees top and 43 degrees bottom, which is in line with the numbers reported on MIUI's power monitor. And seriously, the phone was hot. And to be honest, it has been like that for quite some time now. I can see that turning off anti-aliasing should help with this issue because that hits heavy on the chip but it's just interesting to see that this phone finally overheats fortunately only the screen refresh rate throttles not the performance because as you can see here while i'm driving around the map with new asset loading and everything you still get the solid 60 fps gameplay the graphical fidelity is exactly as it was before the texture details the shadows and everything even in some fights later you'll see that nothing changes in the gameplay experience which is awesome with that said, the phone is still quite toasty. As about 20 minutes into the game, we are now at almost 48 degrees at the top half and 43.5 degrees on the bottom half of the phone. Honestly, a fan attachment would be much appreciated at this point. But yeah, the show must go on here. And towards the end of the game, I realized that I could recruit team members during the match. And I guess I should have done that from the start since basically I got too confident and got shot to death from afar. My, It's my bad, but I got carried to winner winner chicken dinner by my teammates. So that's cool. So the game finished at 50 minutes mark and immediately I went to the setting and changed it to 90 FPS, which automatically sets the graphics at the lowest one. Right now we are at 85% battery, temperature has cooled down a little bit at 45 to 46 degrees top and 42 to 43 degrees bottom. Still quite warm, but you can see that the screen refresh rate ramps back up again to 120, which means we are good to go for another test. Let's start a team deathmatch mode now and see if the phone will overheat and throttle. Well, actually, it's not an if question, but instead, how quick will it overheat? Because 90 FPS seems to hit on the chips real hard, and it basically throttles down back to 60 FPS in only one minute of gameplay. This time, both the FPS in-game as well as the screen refresh rate has been dialed down, although to PUBG's credit, the 60 FPS gameplay is rock solid just like how it is on the Battle Royale mode. Now, honestly, I don't have much footage to show here because I totally got destroyed by the enemy team, but it's nice to see that actually the phone manages to cool down at the 60 FPS, lowest graphical setting, which means four minutes after it throttles, the game ramps back up to 90 FPS with screen refresh rate to match. Well, I mean, not match 90, 90, but you know, it goes back up. Our team lost quickly after though. And yeah, there you have it. We got a warning of the game dialing itself back from 90 to 60. And after the six minutes match, the phone is at 46 degrees top and 42 degrees bottom. And that pretty much marks the end of PUBG New State test. Let's move on to the final game now, which got the most request in my previous video. Call of Duty Mobile. As always, let's take a quick look at the settings page. And basically, I've maxed out everything here, turned on all the settings, and I opted to test God Ray here, which is volumetric lighting, and this requires the anti aliasing to be turned off. Anyway, let's start a new game now. We're going to start with Battle Royale and check out the TDM mode later. 
And as a starting point, the phone is now at 81% battery with temperature at 46 degrees top, 42 degrees bottom. Basically, I wanted to keep going while the phone is warm to test out if this game will make the F4 GT overheat and throttle like before or not. So jumping off the plane first and foremost, like in PUBG, it's a pretty solid 58 to 59 FPS situation. The assets loads in gradually as we get closer to the ground, and virtually there is no lagging at all, which is very nice. So I got a sniper rifle quite early, and I wanted to show you the performance while scoping, and I can happily report that it doesn't affect the frame rate in any way. Also, the gyro aiming works perfectly, which is the same thing with every other game, and that's just great. So I wanted to show you this clip of a fight close to a building, which got some shadows going on, and we can see the FPS drops to the low 50s, frequently hovers around 51 to 55 FPS, and then we got onto a place with more shadows, more grass, and the FPS drops even further to 41, 45, 48, and that seems to be the pattern here in COD Mobile. So now we know that the game is not running at a locked in 60 FPS with possible cause number one is the phone is quite hot already, which means this is a form of throttling, but my bet is on the second hypothesis where the chip just can't put out a solid 60 FPS because the screen refresh rate stays at 120, which means there's no sign of throttling like we see in PUBG New State. But I'll add some more information to this in the pinned comment below, and also you can comment about your opinion and experiences on this. So later, I got this drop package that contained a grenade launcher, and while happily blasting people away, we see a brief moment of 30 FPS in this fight facing towards the power plant with fences and some trees in the scene as well. I guess that was a bit challenging as the game spent quite some time at the low 30s during the fight. But then it jumps back up to almost 60 when everything is over in the same location. But yeah, in other places where I used this war machine or even firing the rocket launcher, the worst drop I see was at only around 50 FPS. With that said though, I honestly don't notice the fluctuations as much most likely because I was focusing on the other stuff such as aiming, moving, and firing, but you might notice it more than I do here. So your miles may vary. After playing for 18 minutes now, we still have 71% battery left. The temperatures are at 45 degrees top and 42 degrees bottom. So definitely the phone was not overheating, but it's being pushed quite hard here. But yeah, let's move on to the next test. And finally, let's check out the frontline mission, which is like a team deathmatch game here. From the get-go, in contrast with the Battle Royale mode, this is a pretty much locked 60 FPS gameplay, or to be exact, it was 57 to 59 FPS, but that's close enough. Only when one of my teammates was blasting a flamethrower away, the number went down to 54, but that's just a moment and it's hardly an issue as explosions from the Hunter Killer drone or the Predator missile did nothing to the FPS. It's just... Uh, I found out that I have a talent of killing myself with this missile. <laughs> anyway, I'm pretty sure that I'm playing with bots here, but that's good because we got plenty of kills and chances to use the drones and missiles, and towards the end of the game, just scoping around with the sniper also causes no issue, and yeah, by the end of this 6 minutes match, we got a temperature reading of just below 44 degrees top and 41 degrees bottom. Finally, after one and a half hour of gaming here, we ended up at 68% battery, so 32% battery usage, pretty much in line with our previous testing, which projects to about four hours of gaming at maxed out setting. The only difference between the previous testing and this one is we got to see the moment when the phone overheated and throttled the settings, which is in PUBG new state, but even then the frame rate is still a solid 60 FPS. So it's worth noting that the phone is at 48 degrees hot. So yeah, I hope this part 2 of my gaming test helps shed some light onto the performance of the Poco F4 GT, as well as the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip in general when you use it for gaming in real life. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any more things to add. I'll try my best to reply to you all and make sure to subscribe so you won't miss the next testing. And please use the affiliate links when buying anything to help me at no extra cost to you. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Kenneth and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.